Welcome to the fifth episode of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Is Reportage, and I'm a wedding photographer myself. Today we've got the brilliant Paul Fox, based in Cornwall in the UK and one of our top 30 photographers of 2018. Stick with us to hear about his love of Sony, tips on shooting really close, growing up in Cornwall, a very surprising favourite film, why he personally enters awards, tips on meeting clients, and much more. Hey Paul, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you doing? You're right. Yeah, good, good, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, how's how's weddings been? I guess it's a bit of a quieter season bit now. Is how's things? Yeah, just wound down now. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, got a couple more to go this year. But yeah, been a cracking season. Loads of really cool couples, which is the main thing. It's the main thing I want. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed. Um, so you you were one of the first photographers I knew to go Sony, and now like the whole world of wedding photography is Sony. Um, I mean, your review of the A9 actually was a big influence to me in in going Sony myself. So yeah, still still loving it, still loving the A9. Yeah, man. Um, longest I've ever been with any one camera, which which says it all. Um, I I've always jumped from one to another. I'm terrible for gear. I, I always keep my eye on gear. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> have, you, have you gone through yeah. lots of cameras? Systems? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I jumped on mirrorless like way back, uh, back in the sort of Fuji X Pro One days, long before it was suitable for weddings. I was using it for weddings, um, which was stupid. I used to manually focus it because uh, the autofocus was that bad. Oh, man. But <laughs> how, how did you manual focus at weddings? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was running it alongside a DSLR still. So it was like a second cam. Uh, for me but I loved it I just loved the way it worked um, made more sense uh, the, the whole looking through uh, the, the actual lens and not seeing the final image never worked for me my brain <laughs> is not obviously not creative enough to <laughs> to picture that final image I need to literally see it right, so okay. that's how my brain functions better and as soon as I sort of moved over to mirrorless um, I felt like my work just got got way better I know it's not about the gear but it, <laughs> it helps it, it helps if you've got the tool that that suits the way that you you work and your brain functions yeah definitely yeah, yeah. and so are you do you shoot with two a9s do you? yeah yeah two a9s um mostly kind of well 24 mil which i know you're a big fan of oh, i do like um <laughs> yeah i love love my 24 mil um and 85 um a fair bit but i've kind of cut that down this last sort of 12 months i've moved more to 24 and 50 okay. as my main two i always felt um 85 was too tight and i never really loved it it's just one of those focal lengths I can't quite fall in love with totally. It just feels a bit too detached for me. <laughs> right, all cool. it is. Well, it's just, yeah. And that's what I, I love about your work, especially, is that you, you seem to get so physically close to the subjects. Um, do you have any tips for people who, who, who want to shoot close like that, but are maybe wary or a bit afraid in, in doing so? I think, um, obviously, you've got to be a bit brave. It's, it's difficult at first, and I've got closer as my career's gone on, definitely. Um, I, and I think a lot of it is about body language. Um, it's about building up a bit of a rapport with people on the day. So I'm not one of those silent photographers. I do talk to people. I do chat. I, I don't think it's possible to be invisible on a wedding day. Yeah, like I, I know that we're all about reportage in this like group, but um, you, you can't not influence the wedding day because you're you're obviously there with cameras. Like there's no if you try and hide it, it's just weird. Yeah. Like, so I think just think embrace it and just I, I'm not shy about people knowing I'm there photographing them. It's more about them being relaxed about you doing it as cool. as much as possible i think you can't be in bride prep and not they don't know you're there no like, that's like, right. you know what i mean <laughs> we're quite so, conspicuous yeah. yeah exactly yeah uh, i mean a, yeah a guy with a beard and two cameras he sticks out a bit in a room full of girls it's so just embrace it and just be a bit brave and just dive in there and get stuck in most people they might find it weird, a little bit weird at first but within like five or ten minutes they get used to you and the way you work um and obviously like educating your clients is huge as well with that yeah what do you mean like, by that? do you tell them beforehand that you're gonna yeah, work yeah. close uh yeah I, I talk to people about that before they've even like booked me when they first kind of get in touch i talk about how i work like close to people um i might not be right in their faces all the time you know <laughs> like yeah. but i do work in like close to the action um and i sort of explain to them why uh explain to them like what that how that affects your images and how they feel more intimate and more like you're actually a part of it um and i sort of explain like how i think it's weirder to be like hiding far away with a long lens if, yeah. if you're like relaxed at a wedding and then you clock someone pointing a camera at you from across the room and they've got like a 70 to 200 <laughs> pointed at you i think that's 
a bit more weird than when someone's just openly photographing you from close by. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that is so true. That really is true. Yeah, it's less sneaky, isn't it? You know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, the, and the resultant images are so much more intimate. And that really comes across in your work. You know, it's yeah. really intimate. It really makes the viewer feel like they were there. Um, yeah, yeah it, it's awesome. Thanks, man. Um, um, you grew up in Cornwall, which where I'm based now as well. Um, what was it like growing up down here? You know, did you want to be a surfer? Did you want to be a, a landscape photographer? <laughs> Uh, no, I, I didn't touch photography really until um, I was probably 25, something like that. Um, so quite late to it. I was uh, like one of them geeky kids that was, I was, well, I was always good at like maths and oh, physics really? and all really? that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I did sports. I was really active with all that, but um, never really photography. I didn't think of myself as creative or artistic at all until I was like mid 20s and then started getting into, into the photography, which was like landscapes. Um, oh, it was, was it? Did you, yeah, like, yeah. You grew up in a perfect place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just a friend of mine got into it and I just sort of tagged along at first and then started gradually stealing the camera more and more and then <laughs> bought, bought my own and yeah, went, went from there. Um, I didn't really mean to get into it. It's one of those happy accidents. I think a lot of people are in the same as that like they just ended up in this profession somehow that's true um, yeah, same as me how, how yeah. did you get to shoot your very first wedding oh man what was my first wedding uh so that was it would it was friends of a friend that's that's what it was and i was cheap <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna lie when i started out yeah i was way too cheap i didn't know anything about the the industry i didn't know what we should be charging i didn't know anything about weddings i think i'd been to one wedding when I shot my first wedding. Oh, really? Wow. So it's yeah. all very fresh. Um, right? Dived in. Yeah, yeah. I did some second shooting um, around the same time as well. Uh, and I actually did a course with someone where it was like two days of training and then the last day was shooting a wedding with them. Oh, that's cool. Um, and that was that was quite that did, was quite handy. Did that help your confidence? And Yeah, just seeing how someone else works, you know. And yeah. Even though I don't work in any way like them anymore because they were way more traditional than I am. Oh, really? Like, it was oh, much, okay. more, much more posed and much more staged, but it was just good to see like how to inter how to cope with a wedding day right um and, yeah. and just to see what the actual sort of structure of a wedding day is because like I, i'd only i think i'd only been to my my dad's wedding before i shot oh, weddings really? so wow. like it's like a totally 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 weird experience suddenly jumping in trying to photograph one uh, and i probably shouldn't have been photographing it if i'm honest <laughs> like <laughs> looking back i wasn't good enough you know well, well I, but, I think it's i think it's good to kind of just put yourself into the deep end like that really you know yeah, it was maybe a bit too much of a deep <laughs> to be honest. But I did all right. I mean, they loved the photos, so and that's that's all that really matters. But looking back at it now, I cringe a little bit. But <laughs> I think everybody does yeah. when they look back at their old yeah. work, though. So you must have enjoyed that first wedding, then, and you just, you yeah. just like the yeah, results yeah, yeah. and just kind of went from it from there. Totally, I, I totally overestimated how uh, how formal weddings were. I I I turned up in like a three piece suit. <laughs> which I don't do anymore I'm like just like shirt and trousers now but I turned up in like a full posh free piece suit oh, okay. I, I think I looked smarter than the groom it was like <laughs> really weird <laughs> but that's I just funny. had no idea you know <laughs> no, that's funny, yeah. man. so I'm going to um, change tack a little bit um, so first thing or things that comes into your mind what makes you happy oh wow uh, first thing that came to my mind was my dogs, which is really sad. Oh, isn't it? yeah, no, that's not sad. That's cool. I was going to ask you about your dogs. Yeah. What, what dogs have you got? Uh, I've got two collies, um, uh, which are awesome. I, I love them to bits. I don't have any kids, and they, they are like my four legged little fairy children, oh, which yeah. is weird. Nice. Um, but yeah, my, my, my wife and my kids, I, I just, I'm, I'm quite a quiet person. I don't, um, don't lead an extravagant lifestyle or anything i'm i'm most happy when i'm like at home with my with my, with my little weird family uh and just you know out walking around cornwall and hiking around and yeah that's that's kind of my my thing and movies i love movies love oh yes music, i've got you know. i'm gonna ask you about that as well it's, you're a self-confessed film buff so do am I? I that's what it says on your website there oh, no <laughs> Um, do you have a favourite film? Oh, you can't go to ask the, the favourite question. film bomb. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, man, that's a hard one. I don't have a favourite film. Four um, Weddings and a Funeral? Shut up. <laughs> I mean, it's all right, but 
it's, it's not. so good. It's like it is one of the best ever films. It's a, crack, just... it's a cracking film. It's not. It's not favorite film kind of level. Oh, though, is it's it? in my top ten. Yeah, it might be in my top five. Yeah. But then, yeah. what? What is your favorite film then, Paul? Everyone is dying to know. Yeah, I, you know, you know when people ask you that, and your brain goes completely <laughs> blank. And the only film I can think of is Predator, which is not even close <laughs> to being my favorite film. <laughs> That's the one I know the most lines from. <laughs> oh man! That, did they? Did they do a remake of that as well? You... Uh, they've done all sorts of yeah. awful remakes involving um, predators and aliens. I think, yeah. The first one is good, the yeah. original, but not not top. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back to you with a favourite okay. film. We will I'll come back. You. Think about it throughout the rest of this. Interview. <laughs> well, let me look for my film collection. And I'll see. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go back again. So um, you were in the top thirty. This is Reportage Photographers of 2018, which is an amazing feat. I mean, that's, I mean, that's well done. That's awesome. Yeah. So. Why do you personally enter awards, and not just uh, reportage awards, but just awards in general? What what is it for you that keeps you entering? Okay, um, a few things. Uh, that that was that was crazy, by the way. Getting that, I was totally blown away by that. Well, I was totally um, deserved, man. It's brilliant work. Uh, I I just I, I don't. I'm really bad at sharing my work. Like I don't share my work hardly at all online. I'm just not. Com- I don't like putting myself out there. I'm not confident with it. Um, and this was a, a little way for me to get over that slightly was this this last like 12 to 18 months maybe I just started throwing more images into awards um, focusing on that a little bit more just to see if I can kind of hold myself up at a level like almost, it was almost a way of comparing like am I am I getting to a level where I can win awards am I am I taking images that are good enough um, sure. but that people will sort of look at and judge and say yes that's a you know great image and uh, it's gone well. I've, I mean, it's been nice. It's been a good little boost for my confidence. Um, and maybe I'll show some people my pictures now. Occasionally. <laughs> just occasionally. I'll, that is good I to might, do. I might post to my Instagram account just for the hell of it. <laughs> How do you approach your social media, by the way? Do you do, do, you do it frequently or do you Badly. intend to? Agree with you? <laughs> Badly. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm... I'm I'm not a huge social media person. Like I don't I don't like to have my life out there on on the web like that. I'm not just not that sort of person. And uh, sharing my images online is something I find really difficult. Like I say, I just I just uh, oh, really I d- why just for- I don't know. I just I think it's that feeling of like showing off. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's marketing, look, man. It's business. I know this. I know this. It makes I, I, yeah. I totally totally makes sense to do it on a, a like a logical business level. I'm I just, think it's different if it's on your personal profile because then that is kind of more kind of showing off. And yeah, I don't really totally, understand yeah, that yeah. much why photographers do that so much. But on your business accounts, you know, it's yeah. marketing. I totally agree, and I'm terrible at marketing. <laughs> marketing i'm absolutely terrible at marketing it's like something i really need to work on is is self-promotion <laughs> so how how are you getting your bookings because you're always really busy and you know, um, so how, how do you yeah. get your bookings well i i i aim i only aim for about 30 a year that's kind of where i want to cap it that's that's, um, that's a lot is it well it's a good number well it's a good number yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but some people are doing crazy numbers some people yes yeah. some people do yeah yeah but that's that's like the cap that's about as many as i want to do and um i think last year about 70 percent was referrals ish give, that, or, give or take well, that's really good um, though isn't it and that was doing like a good job. photographers and couples and venues you know like right, a okay. spread of a spread of different referrals um which is which is nice because you don't have to like actively pay for advertising <laughs> for those which is really lovely do you think but, that's why you don't do so much in social media is because you get so many kind of referrals so you don't you don't need to do that approach yeah uh, yeah uh, yeah it's laziness isn't it? <laughs> uh, like I'm, I'm relying on <laughs> i'm relying on those referrals to come in which is risky isn't it that's risky you can't have all your eggs in one basket um well but it's obviously working for you though yeah 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 i'm getting away with it uh, <laughs> I, I do need to i need to up up my marketing and social media game definitely so that i can fill those blanks in better and not just rely on that especially as your price goes up i think those referrals don't always convert as much yeah, yeah. you found that as changes yeah i found that yeah. when i put my price up as well do things do change yeah because you're kind of killing some of your older referral market potentially yeah and hoping that people will come with you on um, that little price journey uh, which That's, doesn't always happen no i guess it um, doesn't i guess it doesn't but it's but, working out well for you then. yeah it's fine yeah i mean i'm i'm about at the right point where I should be next year based on previous years so yeah it, it's all looking good um I, I'd like to just be a little bit more controlled and more sure of how where my work is coming from so I think I think I need to you know sit down and do a bit of a, a push on the old marketing and social media front but yeah. as we all do yeah. though, definitely. <laughs> um so a, a big burning question do you eat the canapes 
Hell yeah. <laughs> is <laughs> that a question? <laughs> <laughs> some people don't. Some people don't. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to ask quite a few people. No, a, a, a so cheeky really. canapé is fine, isn't it? Like, as, as, yeah. it, as it's going past. Oh, I mean, of course. It's good to keep the energy levels up. I mean, I, I don't make people feed me, though, at weddings, which is a bit weird. Like most, most, some, yeah, most some photographers have it in do, their contract, yeah. don't they? So, yeah, why uh, do you not? Well, what do you think about that? I just, I don't know. I think I just find that a bit of an odd thing. I always think, like why you would be getting paid to do a job and then also <laughs> expect to be fed. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I'm just quite happy feeding myself. Um, yeah. I just don't see it as that big an issue. But I suppose it depends on where the wedding is. Like certain ones, it would be a right pain to, to try and sort yourself out. But yeah. Um, but And most couples offer anyway, which is nice. So That is nice. <laughs> and it's, I always say yes. It, but... <laughs> it's so funny. The food subject is always something that wedding photographers talk about. It's always Yeah, so it's funny. controversial, isn't it? It's <laughs> it controversial. Is controversial. I, I'm quite happy to sit in my car with a pasty because I'm Cornish. <laughs> Proper and Cornish. I'm like, <laughs> that's fine by me because we, we have good good pasties down here. It's not like a, a Ginsters. Do you know, thing, I'm, not right, into, you know? <laughs> I'm not into pasties. Get out. I know. <laughs> I've never surfed as well. Um, so let's change it a little bit. What annoys you in life? Oh, annoys me. Um, I don't, well, I don't like people who are dishonest. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, and yeah. that like, goes to everything. Like I would say like all of the kind of music and art and everything I like, it always has to have a like a core of kind of like bit of feel like it's honest. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's and, good. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I'd say that's a that's that I don't like people who lie. I don't like people who are like too two faced. Anything two faced I'm not not keen on. That drives me nuts. Okay, good. So, so <laughs> I will edit out the bit where I was uh, insulting Paul earlier. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's go back to your kind of work. And all your reportage awards actually feature people smiling or laughing in some way. You Ooh. know, all of them do, which is awesome. I didn't um, know that. Yeah, there's a real joy to your images. Um, any tips on how you capture the fun, you know, so well? Um, I think part of it is the couples I get are fun they have fun weddings I, like i'd say at least like 80 percent of the weddings i go to i feel like i would enjoy it as a guest like right. it would be a good wedding you know yeah. um but i'm and, sure you don't get those fun weddings by accident you know yeah i mean that's probably all yeah down to the sort of language i use on my website i do i do I do mention how like weddings should be fun. They shouldn't be boring and dreary. And I suppose everything you do on your, your website and everything that people like potential like clients see, like leads them to make a decision or not. So if you're always on about fun and showing fun images, then you're going to get fun weddings. Aren't you? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's, it's certainly about letting people just be themselves on the day as well. And not like, I'd never try and control anything. As I'm sure loads of people in the group are the same, but I, I never like ask anyone to do something again or like stop yeah. anything in its tracks. And, and, and I will be there behind my camera laughing like with them and stuff. If, if someone's, you know, drunk and doing something silly or, or whatever, I, I'm, I'm like, I, I sort of go along with it. Like it's, it's about your body language and yeah not being a moment killer <laughs> that's you need to yeah you need yeah to if you're asking stuff. people to repeat things that would be oh, awful you, it? some people do that though don't they no, no not, not this is so. reportage members but yeah, no way yeah yeah <laughs> no never ever but yeah like if, if people are, are playing games and stuff on a day i sort of get involved I'm, I'm like right in amongst it and people just pick up on the fact that i'm enjoying what they're doing and they're enjoying it so they just carry on and and yeah that's that's part of it you, you don't want to be that a grumpy photographer no in my I, opinion like, yeah i think you know. you're so right i think that that makes a big big difference your kind of persona and how you are with people yeah 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 totally um so i'd like to go specifically um about client meetings whether you know in person or skype or um you know do you have any advice about about those uh yeah um i mean i i do a mix of of in uh, like meeting people and in, and skype ones i i actually go more towards skype nowadays just because it's kind of easy uh, and quick and I, yeah, I find exactly. I can still get the same kind of results from it but um I don't really go in with a script I don't have any kind of script I don't have a checklist of things I need to tell them or anything like that I just sort of have a chat um I ask them about themselves I ask them about their jobs about their like what they what they're into mm -hmm. I ask them about their wedding and and just have a chat to them I don't sort of go in with like a hard sell kind of tactic I think that's really good yeah yeah I just sort of but at some point they'll ask you the questions they want to yeah the answers to it and and it, sometimes they'll just ask me to give them a bit of a rundown of how i work which is which is cool and it's um, nice for them to know you're interested in them i think as a couple yeah, people like yeah. talking about themselves and their weddings well they don't yeah, want to be, exactly. just be sold to and if you ask them about their weddings you then pick up on what's important to them as well because they're going to mention things like oh it's going to be really chilled out it's going to be really relaxed it's not going to be formal and then you know like what to talk about back to them <laughs> well uh, like what, really what to kind advice. of emphasize yeah. back um that's so true yeah, yeah so i always sort of try and not not reflect what, what they're talking about but in a way you're kind of doing that like you're emphasizing 
the bits that you think they want they want to kind of hear that are going to that's good i mean you must have really them, good you know <laughs> good personable skills to be able to do that yeah totally yeah 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 do you think that's you know almost as important as photographic skills is how you are as a per- as a person really oh, in this business skills. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah because it's it's a, a large part of it is not customer service kind of but similar like yeah. it's similar like you need to be good with people on, on like an immediate level like you need to make friends very quickly that's so true and they're not yeah. like going to be lifelong friends necessarily but no. you need to <laughs> be able to put people at ease and like let people relax around you so yeah just having those kind of those personable skills is, is really helpful and being able to read people a little bit as well like read what the emotions of the that are happening and like know when to be quiet and when to laugh and join in right yeah like, you didn't do a degree in psychology <laughs> did you did no, no 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 it's interesting stuff and, but it yeah, is interesting, I'm, I'm isn't not, it? I haven't got anything formal based on it. It's just sort of intuition, I suppose, yeah. well, isn't it? No, that's, that's um, cool, man. And a really good advice, I think. I think that's just really, really important. It's probably as important as the photography yeah. on the day. Because if, if those people aren't having those moments in front of you, you can't photograph those moments. So you, if you can't put people at ease, then you're in, it's, it just makes it so much more difficult, then, doesn't it? Because then, then you're trying to sneak shots. If you end up having to try and sneak at the wedding and like, if you, if you don't feel like you can just walk up and photograph a moment that's happening because you're worried about ruining that moment, then that's like a big hurdle straight away. <laughs> yeah. So good. I think that, I was, honestly, I, I, I didn't butt in then because I just thought that's going to be a great soundbite, I think, to actually <laughs> like, preview this episode because I just think that is this brilliant, brilliant advice. That is really, yeah. really good. Um, what do you find the most challenging aspect of wedding photography to be? Um, it's a good question. Yeah, it's a good question. I I mean, light is one of them. Light's sort of something I'm always working on because we are thrust into these like situations where there is really bad light sometimes. Right, yeah. And trying to make like, that work when like you don't Polo have any... Polo and Fort. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Or Pendennis Castle. Oh, yeah, just, even like, darker, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's not not only just darkness either because actually I quite like low light, but there, there's good low light and bad low light. Okay. There's, like, yeah. some, it's just that ugly, muddy light that... And like... Mi- hot, like sometimes the mixture of light is just and you just you're, you're taking photos knowing that this is going to be a nightmare later on when i get to this <laughs> edit so you and just, what, do, do, do you ever but, use yeah. flash for like the speeches and things or oh, do you just I've tried save... I've, yeah. I've dabbled i've dabbled with it it's not for me mm. i just i find it really off-putting for my own process as much as i think it might be off-putting for other people like the actual guests and right stuff as well yeah. but it's more about how it puts me off it breaks me out of my flow because i i I shoot quite a lot of images. I, my brain works on a kind of, um, I guess a kind of like, I, I, I take images, I, I kind of improve them and I keep taking more and more and just like improving, just try trial and error. That's what it is. So yeah, I, yeah. I essentially work in trial and error. Well, that's good. It's obviously <laughs> working. Is that? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I, I take a huge, a huge number of images and, and doing that with flash is, is bad. I think if I was the sort of person who could sit and choose their moment better, that's a skill in itself and just take like, a lot less shots like one or two of a scene well but i think as you say that the, it is trial and error and, and you, you don't get better if you're just taking a few images i think you've got to try yeah. different things you've got to push yourself and try yeah. different uh, compositions you say you take a lot of images at a wedding and like oh, i've got to ask it you say like how, how many kind of an average do you take oh this is one of those other controversial ones isn't it um <laughs> i don't I, know what, i think it's, it's less controversial these days yeah fair point it's not weird for me to come back with like ten thousand images from right. a day but yeah. to qualify that a little bit i do sort of 14 hour days is normal well, that like, is, tw- that's 12, long days. 12 to 14 hours is about average for me oh yeah. okay yeah right, and yeah. I've, I've gone long I've, yeah i think about 17 odd hours is probably the longest wedding day i've done something in that region man that is which a, long was a bit time. nuts so for good. you why, why do you think it's important for you to take so many images then as you say is that trial and I think it's just knowing how your brain works. If, if you're the sort of person that, that works better, if your images essentially end up better from watching a scene, waiting, 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 and then taking like one or two shots, that's great and good mm. for you. And I envy your cull. That's true. Yeah. That would be lovely. <laughs> yeah. But that's not how I get the best images for myself. I, I, I think that, that with the modern technology we have, that where you can shoot silently and you can, and, or very quietly if you're not silent, you know, I'm, I'm silent. Yeah. So, <laughs> but <laughs> if, you can, if you can shoot silently and shoot with like good burst rates and stuff about them to worry about buffers and all that stuff, you, you can shoot through those moments. You can then like, I, I would rather pick uh, the perfect little image later in the cull than just take the chance I nailed it with like one or two shots I, I think you are taking a chance and I think you will end up throwing away or not throwing away images but not having the best that that image could have been totally if, agree. if you had shot more of it you know yeah. and also just making like little adjustments like shooting and 
just micro adjusting your like composition and just to try and frame those little elements better and like have a bit of space around that person that you maybe didn't before or like oh no there's a a beam coming out of the back of that person's head I'll adjust and move here and then shoot more frames I, and and yeah it just it just making t lots of little improvements just elevates those images just makes them better as, as good as they can be yeah and yeah. I, I wholeheartedly agree and and that approach you mean it means you're giving the client the best possible images well you're picking the best yeah. ones from those so I, yeah. I totally agree um changing tack again slightly <laughs> if you could be somebody else for a day living or dead who would you be? Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> a bit left field. But... <laughs> oh, I wasn't expecting these sort of questions. Now. This is like this is awful. Um, so, living or dead? Um, oh man, that's huge. Pause the recording. Oh, <laughs> give me ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't. I don't know who I would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it back on you. No, Who's I don't. It's not on? about me. So no, but no. So you <laughs> Put don't the pressure know? back on you, Al. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to be anyone else. You know, if you're very happy with yourself, you can just be... Yeah, I, I'm obviously very unimaginative as well. <laughs> can, can I go back to Predator we could again? Go, can, yeah. I, can I be Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. for a day? <laughs> that would be fun, actually, though, wouldn't it? it, it back in those times as well. The guy's a legend. Yeah. That's what I, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good answer. You can be Arnold for a day. <laughs> no one else will give that answer, I don't think. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you have a bucket list, you know, in life, um, in weddings? Um, ooh. In weddings, well, I like shooting at home. Yeah. <laughs> These people do destination your, is weddings. Is your house a wedding I, venue? <laughs> <that>? <laughs> no, I, 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 lo I love shooting in Cornwall and Devon and getting home at the end of the night, which yeah. is weird. But saying that, I would like to shoot some like mountainy type weddings. Like Canada would be up there for me. Um, which is a good segue because didn't you get you got married yes. yourself in yeah. Canada? Didn't yes, you? yes, yeah. I did. Quite was it a few couple of years ago? A few years? Yeah, a few years back now. A few years ago. What was that um, like being you know on the other side of the camera? Because you were you were doing it. As, you were a wedding photographer back then as yes. well. So, yeah. What, yeah. What was it like being the other side? Yeah, it was uh, surprisingly all right. <laughs> I was a bit worried about it, especially because it was just the two of us. Like yeah. we we eloped, so I thought uh, the, the photographer's presence is going to be a bit stronger than what. It would be for a bigger wedding, but mm. um, I mean, it's a good mate of mine who did it, and you know Stuart. Uh, yeah, Stuart yeah, Gervin, great mine. Um And yeah, he 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 smashed it, and and he shoots on on Nikon with the loud what are those loud things? clacky shutter, <laughs> and I don't remember noticing it, which is a good sign for all of you Nikon shooters. That <laughs> when you're wrapped up in the moment, you don't hear your shutter. <laughs> but no, he he took. There's one image that always sticks out from my wedding because it like from a photographer point of view because it. I kind of I didn't know he took it and he was very close and I had no idea and it was kind of our first kiss it was it was actually the ring exchange I think but we were kind of kissing at the same time nice and, um, nice. and he I think he shot on like a 35 mil and he's like real tight filled the frame of us like and he must have been like a couple feet to like three three feet away maybe or something like that and I had no clue so oh, that just goes cool. to show I think sometimes you think you're quite conspicuous and maybe you aren't because if they're really wrapped up in that day they they soon forget about you yeah um what was the question <laughs> <laughs> bucket list no but yeah yeah, so, yeah sorry i did segue off there didn't i but yeah yes a bucket list um and, and, and not just weddings though in kind of in life do you have i mean yeah um what well, travel i mean travel is is like something i want to do a lot of i, I, I want to go and explore a load of the scandinavian countries that's kind of something that's been on on my mind but my wife is oh, really bad with the cold so <laughs> trying to <laughs> swing around to this idea is difficult <laughs> was it not cold um, in canada though like, it, we were there in the summer and it was all right actually oh, it was okay. not too bad yeah nice. we still had snow on the some of the mountaintops but um a little bit here and there but no no it was uh, it was nice it was nice it's, i've seen some of the images in there they were brilliant Stu knocked it out of the park it's awesome um so you've just shot a wedding what's the first thing you do when you get back home pour a glass of wine you do nice <laughs> that's good yeah. what do you do when you get back home <laughs> i've not oh, man i normally have like a five six hour drive so i'm like oh, oh yeah. i have yeah. a shower because i get very i get a little bit sweaty right but yes yeah, so yeah. you have a drink glass of wine uh chuck the cards in the computer and leave them going while i just uh, get myself sorted out um cuddle my dogs oh uh, man, you do love your dogs <laughs> don't you? yeah well yeah well oh Tara would be asleep at that point, so she's not around to cuddle to the dogs. Uh, and yeah, just just chill out and unwind. I don't really look at the images um, when I get back. I just no. I just chuck them in the computer and get them all, you know, all that process going with the backups and stuff. Yeah, must take quite um, a long time to back up about ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot of images, isn't it? <laughs> um, what do you do in the quiet season? 
Um, okay, so, yeah, like, <laughs> you'll notice how sad my life is. I walk my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's no, no. a theme, there's a theme. In it. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I love Cornwall in the winter because um, it's, it's, everyone goes home and we get the place to ourselves and all the beaches yeah. are just like gloriously empty. So like a beautiful winter's day in Cornwall is, is, uh, is right up my street. But no, I, I, um, I, I, obviously there's all the stuff to do with the business, like, well, you don't have the, to say that. You don't all know. the website stuff, but I I do chill out a lot. I, I watch a lot of films. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, what, just... Predator, Predator Two. <laughs> Predator, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to edit that bit out. <laughs> you can't now because you mentioned it. No, times. no, it's staying. Um, yeah, it's staying but yeah, yeah, just just chill out and, and take stock a little bit. I, I always have. I always try and do a bit of training and stuff. Um, I love like online training courses. Um, oh, cool! It means like, like, what, what, means like... I can stay in my little bubble at home, but still learn. <laughs> well, like stuff. creative live stuff. Or... Uh, yeah, yeah, creative live is one but um just everyone's throwing them out there now there's all sorts of people doing like online online courses and right stuff. yeah and i always like to just try and pick something that I, I feel like i can improve um and and just like focusing on, on something like that like one aspect so uh one thing i, I do want to work on flash just so i've kind of got it in my in my bag of tricks well I can... i've seen your first dance you nailed it with flash and your first dance i think and your got... parting images they look great yeah uh the party stuff i'm pretty happy with now i know i've got like several sort of different setups i know work in different ways give me different sort of images for for dance floor stuff i'm happy with dance floor i, I wouldn't mind expanding out to see if i could use it in other aspects i know it's, right, this okay. is the reportage you can group, still use flat yeah but you can still use oh you like, mean for portraits I mean, like, as well pot so? potentially just yeah. so like when we've got those winter weddings and it's like dark and and yeah if, if you feel like you haven't got anything yet i'd like to have the sort of skill set to pull some flash portraits out if I needed to yeah, if I want, or if I mean, something creative like took my took my fancy but well it makes you feel more confident um, as well I think yeah yeah cool. I, I think it's good to learn things even if you don't use them just so you know them and, and just so you can call on them if you need to because what happens if something really what happens if some really awesome event where all of the guests like end up outside and you need to photograph it and it's too dark to photograph like you, you need to know your skills so you That's can so true so you can jump in even if it's out of your comfort zone you still need to be able to throw it in there yeah, no, yeah. good advice yeah. and so uh, I'm gonna. It's gonna just time for this one more question. Um, yeah. What would be your top tips for people just starting out in the industry? Yeah, because you're quite. I mean, you've been doing it a few years now, but I think you've yeah. you've like really skyrocketed. I think, and, and so I think a lot of people would like kind of want to replicate your kind of success. Do you have any top tips? Yeah, sure. Um, I can't help you on the marketing. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, no. On that note, like I would say, in terms of like like getting bookings in, I, I think photographers are your best friends like make, oh, really make yeah. friends just go and make friends because it's, yeah. it's beneficial for everyone you send them work they send you work it's like it's it's just one of them things it's just amazing to do um but in terms of like f like the actual photography um i just take your time like like don't run around like a like a mad thing and and feel like you're up against the clock i mean there's certain little bits of the day where you where you are a little bit but there's massive chunks of wedding days where you can take your time to work on a, on an image and like you know be really considerate with it uh, and, and try and improve it. There's loads of time for that. Like wedding days are like full day events. You, you know what I mean? There's lots of time to just stop and think. If you find yourself all flustered, just stop and like have a little think, just work on one thing at a time. Like, yeah. I think that's really good <laughs> yeah. advice. I mean, and about other photographers, how did you, you know, specifically go out and kind of reach out to other photographers when you started or did it I, kind of naturally happen? I didn't or? do it on purpose, but I mean, it's ended up being a huge huge thing for me with my from a business point of view but also just from like just having friends like, yeah in the industry because <laughs> it's quite like, a lonely industry yeah in totally way. Yeah. it's so good to know people and and just have people you can chat to about about like what you do for a living and actually get it as well um and because like my wife doesn't really like she doesn't really understand what i'm on <laughs> about half the time like because it's all photography got yeah big, isn't it yeah. so just having a little network of friends like i've got a little group of like there's about five of us and we send so much work each other's way and and we can just chat about anything and like funny stuff that happens at weddings and just like you can work through things you're struggling with. It's just, it's really good. We, we try and meet up and do a little bit of a kind of informal workshop as well, where we all sort of try and improve each other's skills. We, oh, wow. That's a great idea. Um, that's cool. We critique each other's work as well if, if we, when, when we want to occasionally. That's nice. <laughs> Does that go down well or is it yeah, you're all yeah, very yeah. friendly? Yeah. yeah I, I think, I think if you go in there knowing it's not personal, like critiques, it's, it's a, it's constructive isn't it it's, yeah that's, yeah I, I think i think critiquing the images is, is is a massive way to to grow your your images if you know what what you can improve on then you can go away and work on that you know and also i think just soaking up as a new photographer soak up as many images as you possibly can across different styles 
So not just, not just weddings. Yeah, all yeah. yeah, all different styles. All and even within weddings, like look at flash photography work. Look at all different styles of wedding photography and just let it all seep into your brain and then see what comes out <laughs> of your camera <laughs> like, later on. Just because all that stuff will just go in there subconsciously and then that, they, those will like form your like composition choices and stuff like that on on the day because they're all in there like logged yeah. in there. Just look at people's work, soak it up, think about what they've done, how they've done it, and then like just let that sit in your brain <laughs> and it will come back out <laughs> at some point yeah that is awesome man that's that is great great advice um yeah and i've just come, come to the end so thank you so much for that that was honestly brilliant that was so interesting thank thanks for your time it was awesome cheers man been a pleasure thanks for listening to the fifth episode of our this is reportage podcast if you enjoyed it, you can subscribe to our show on iTunes to be notified when each new weekly episode is ready, bringing you advice, tips and backstories from some of the world's best photographers each week. We're also over on Spotify, if that's more your thing. And you can also head to thisisreportage.com to find a full transcript of this episode. And if you're not already a member of TIR, check out all the benefits of joining us. We're all about promoting the very best in documentary wedding photography. And members receive lots of benefits, including 60 reportage award entries and 18 story award entries per year, an unlimited number of images shown on your profile, exclusive discounts on wedding photography related products, invites to our physical meetups and parties, and much more. No poses, nothing staged. This is reportage. And this is bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>